And welcome to day seven. Today we're going to be making a screw and um, another kind of odd shaped thing. We'll do the screw first and then we'll do the other kind of odd shaped piece uh, in the second video. So um, you may be thinking to yourself at this point, you know, yeah, we made a bunch of kind of weird things and, you know, just different parts and stuff where we actually start to uh, begin creating some things on our own. And that is coming. So don't you fret. We will be. Uh, doing some more real world application as soon as you get a little bit firmer grasp of uh, what we're doing here and how to create things because I don't want to set you loose on it without having a decent understanding of how all this stuff works. So um, <clears throat> today we need to make the screw and if you are looking at the diagram uh, for day seven, it's, uh, it's a bit odd. Um, they give you a little bit of information and then they kind of tell you, um, oh, well, this is you know what it should look like and this is how it should work. Um, and when you're done, your screw should look something like this. Um, and you'll see that it's got all the features that were asked for it. And, um, if you look at your sketch, it should look something like this. Um, although that's upside down. Um, but, uh, it'll look something like this when you're, when you're done. That guy got it rotated. There we go. Um, when you're done. So let's walk through how to create this one because this one is kind of tricky, especially this kind of offset curve here. This arc is not a complete like 90 degree arc. It doesn't make a right uh, angle to its center point. So um, that can kind of throw things off if you're not paying attention. So we're going to go to the front and normal and create a sketch. And the first thing I like to do is start with the center point arc, which by the way, it says in the instructions, you need to use a center point arc to make the curved piece of the screw. So I got auto inference up here, some distance. I'm gonna click my point and I'm gonna keep this um, parallel with the origin. Um, that helps constrain it a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to deal with. Um, the radius of this is actually gonna be about 0.25. Um, yeah, a little less, so I'm gonna click there. And then I'm going to draw this, but I'm going to draw it. I'm not going to draw it all the way down here. That will mess things up. So I'm going about halfway between these two points on the left here. So right about there. And I'm going to zoom in some too because this is kind of a small drawing. Because it is a screw, so it should be relatively small. So really important. This and this should not line up. If they do, it will just do nothing but create headaches for you when you're drawing this thing. So um, let's finish out the drawing. We're going to create a line here. And I'm going to create a line here. And auto inferencing it, keeping everything on the up and up. I'm going to create a line here. I do not want to align that with that. Um, instead, I'm going to draw this across. Now, you'll see that that line right there is already kind of wonky. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on this. And those need to be horizontal. And this, and this, and this need to remain vertical. So I'm already doing a few constraints just to lock these things into place um, so they won't move as much. Now, if you look at the diagram, a couple things that can be confusing are some of the dimensions they give you. So for example, they give you a circumference, not a radius here. Well, we know that the radius is just half the circumference. So I'm going to dimension this guy to 0.225, which is half of the 0.45 um, that they give you for the diameter. And that's gonna shape it up a little bit. And then they tell us that the distance from this point to this point is 0.125. So that tightens that up a little bit. They tell us that this dimension is 0.5, that shortens it up quite a bit. Now you'll notice this is still not locked into place, but we're, we're getting there, we're, we're pretty close. Um, so a couple of dimensions they give you, they give you a weird one again down here at the bottom, which is they give you a diameter. Um, well, how might we figure out to make sure that this and this is actually a diameter? Now there's a couple things we could do. We could say, well, they give us a diameter that's along this horizontal axis. So we could just half it and say 0.125, that's the dimension that this needs to be. Um, but if you wanted to make absolutely certain, we could use construction lines and we could create a center point circle. 
and we can go from here to that edge and stop. And then we can dimension this center point circle to be 0.25, which is what they said the diameter should be. Now you'll notice this is fully constrained. Okay, so we're good, we're locked in. Um, however, they give us this other dimension, that, that um, diameter of 0.45. If I just want to be extra certain that this is correct, what I can do is I can go here and I can do a three-point circle. And this is one we've not played with before, but I can click here, I can click here, and then I can go down and line it up there. Oops. Need to do this as a construction line. Forgot that. So here, here, and pull it down a little bit. And if I dimension this to 0.45, notice how it aligns perfectly. So there's the overlap is exactly the way it needs to be. So that is the correct dimensioning. So again, if you wanted to, you could just click on the two points and check it um, just to make sure that this aligns with this. Um, and I notice I didn't have to change anything here. Um, and that arc lines up perfectly. So we're good on that front. So we're going to go ahead and accept that sketch. And now we're going to use the Revolve tool to make this a full 360. So you probably remember that one from the first day or two. We're going to hit Revolve. And this is going to be, um, this is going to be Revolved. And the axis is going to be that. You can choose either one. It um, doesn't matter which one. They'll both revolve correctly. And there's our screw. Now, um, we need to create a slot in the top of this. So I'm going to accept that. Um, and by the way, you'll notice how this has four different colors. That's because it's directly in the center of the part studio. So it's at the origin, directly centered. So it's being bisected by all these different planes. Um, <clears throat> so what we need to do now is we need to create our little notch for a flathead screwdriver. And what we're going to do there is we need to create a new plane. Now, what plane might I use? Well, I could try to create a plane off of this, but it won't work because it's a revolve. Um, so what is the most common sense plane to use on this guy? Well, if you think about it, I know the height is 0.5. And they say in the instructions that they created the notch by create using a plane that's offset um, from the bottom of the head by 0 0.025. Um, so it makes sense then that I could add those two dimensions together and get a new plane. So I'm going to click on the top plane and I'm going to click on new plane. And I'm going to offset it by 0.525 because it's 0.5 tall and they're offsetting an additional 0 0.025 that added together is 0.525. Why the additional offset? Well, when we get the screw, we don't want to cut all the way through the head. There needs to be some material underneath for it to grab, right? So um, there's going to be that 0 0.025 offset there. And one of the other things, too, is that I'm going to create a sketch on this plane. And this plane is huge, right? And it might not be that easy to see. So um, you can resize planes. You can grab them by the corners and make them substantially smaller. Um, just because I'm going to be working in this small space, so there's no need to have this gigantic plane sitting out there. Um, this will make things a lot easier for me. So plane one, sketch, normal. And I'm going to draw a center point rectangle. Why a center point? Because it needs to be at the origin and it needs to be centered on the workpiece. So I'm going to dimension this guy. This is going to be 0.1. And this is going to be 0.4. Now, if you're looking at the drawing, you may be thinking, well, that doesn't look quite right because there's doesn't come all the way to the edges. Not a big deal. Um, for whatever reason, I think that there's just an error there, but um, it's going to work properly. Um, the offset was actually more important than the dimension of this. We could make this one inch across because all we're doing is just taking a slab out of it. So it doesn't matter um, if it's a little bit longer than the head. That's fine. If you want to adjust, if it makes you feel better, then by all means have it, but you don't have to. So I've got that sketch done. It's fully constrained. Accept that. Now you'll see that it's kind of hard for me to select this rectangle because it's inside of the screw head. You know, so what do I do there? Well, again, that's where your feature list is very valuable. I can just click sketch two, and now I'm going to extrude, and this is going to be a remove. I don't want to cut through the screw, obviously. I want to go up 
and I'm going to choose through all because, again, if I were to change the height of this, I'd still want that notch to be the same depth. So I'm going to hit accept, and there's my notch. Material still on either side, just like it's supposed to be. Looks good. Looks the way we wanted it to. So last thing we have to do is we need to add a chamfer to the bomb. So I'm going to click the bomb here, and I'm going to chamfer it. And the default is that it's 0 0.02 or 0.2. We need it to be 0 0.05, and it's chamfered. Accept. Done. That is our screw. Pretty straightforward, just that initial sketch can be tricky sometimes. So you just have to pay attention to what you're doing, but that is our screw. Um, check out part two for the other component that we're going to make.